Hi, welcome to Story Hour with Miss Barbara. This story is about Gladys and her sisters. Stories from Calhoun Road, a farm in the 1930s and 40s. My favorite image of Gladys and her sisters was one that she gave to me late in her life when she described how she and her sisters went to school arm in arm with the three or four abreast with the oldest one on the windward side and the youngest one, which would be Gladys for five years, on the inside to protect her from the wind. And they had some pretty open fields to go through and some rough weather considering those Wisconsin winters. Um, on their one and a half mile trip to their one room schoolhouse. And on those cold winter mornings, Gladys and her sisters would gather around this hot belly, coal burning stove and warm their feet on the fenders around the bottom and pull on their long brown stockings. They had to wear these ugly things even into the spring. Their parents were so uh, afraid of them getting sick. And the stove, this stove was the center of their three bedroom, two story, white frame farmhouse. And the, wind, the stove was, um, had ice and glass windows on three sides so that it provided light as well as heat. Now their farmhouse had no electricity, no running water, no indoor plumbing. So getting ready for school could be a challenge. And Ma was so busy in the mornings that um, one of her sisters would have to make her lunches. And it was always the same, bread and jelly. And her sisters didn't really know how to make it nice. And this is what she ate for supper as well, because their main meal was at noon when Gladys was in school. And she refused to eat the head cheese that they served for the evening meal uh, that they made from the brains and head of the pigs that they butchered. So she lived on bread and jelly. Never butter with the jelly either jelly or butter, to, having them together was considered extravagant. And I, I always was amazed at how she survived on this diet. Um, now, Hyacinth was the only one who got her hair fixed up in the morning for school. And that was only when she was home from working at the rich folks house because she had cut off the tip of her finger in the um, dishwasher. And sometimes they couldn't even find their one comb and they would have to comb their hair with a fork. Now their walk to school had other hazards besides wind and cold. For one thing, the farmer next door would uh, tie his bull out in the field. And this was just through a chain through the ring in his nose. And he terrified the sisters, especially when he pawed the ground and acted like he wanted to get them. So they were just so afraid that ring wasn't going to hold him. They decided after that to go two fields around and climbing over barbed wire fences to uh, avoid that bull. And there was also uh, a road where cars would park and scary men would expose themselves to the sisters. So Pa would go out there and show his presence and that would 
scare them off. But then springtime came to the marsh, and that marsh made up a good two-thirds of their 30 acres. And so they were rewarded with beautiful sights and sounds in the spring. There were the marsh marigolds, which they called buttercups, and violets and trilliums and lady slippers and the calls of the red-winged blackbird. They had to go over a little bridge to get through the marsh, and there were a variety of wildlife like frogs and pheasants. And so the, in the spring, the girls would roll their stockings down until they got home. Of all the people in her family, Gladys loved school the most. She would have butterflies in her stomach for weeks before school started in the fall. Now her older brothers and sisters would have to wait and not start school right away because they had to help with the harvest and only then could they go to school. But Gladys's folks would have had a hard time making her wait until after the harvest. Luckily, they were more lenient by the time she came along. And Gladys loved everything about school. She loved the kids, the smell of the books, and the smell of the compound they put on the floor before they swept. Um, she loved the library where she read almost every book, and sometimes staying up till one in the morning to finish a book. She was thrilled with learning. She loved recess and all the games that they played like Palm and Red Rover and Rabbit. And of course, baseball, which she was always the last one picked because she was terrible no matter how hard she tried at the game of baseball. And all of her brothers and sisters were pretty bad in sports because they didn't have a bat or a ball at home to practice with. All they ever did was work. And she loved her desk and her crayons and pencils. And she was always so disappointed when Pa didn't get all the books and supplies on her school list. Maybe that was why the teachers never seemed to like her family because the kids had to, the sisters would have to share books or sometimes even use the teachers. And some of the teachers were uh, very hard on her sister, Verona, because she was left-handed, even sometimes whacking her with a ruler. And oftentimes Verona would have to stand at the board for hours in tears, trying to write with her right hand. And one time the teacher commented on her messy paper and said, just like your house. And Miriam stood up to the teacher and said, how do you know? Have you ever been there? But Gladys was a favorite with the teachers. Maybe because of her good memory, she was always given the lead in the class plays. And... Um, she made friends easily, even though she was quiet and shy. In fact, she was the only one in her family who brought friends home from school. And it was the great sorrow of Gladys's life that she didn't get to go to high school. Her teachers came, even the parish priest came to beg her parents to let Gladys go on to high school, but it was not to be. Nobody else went. They didn't have the transportation. They needed the truck for hauling vegetables to the farmer's market. But later in life, Gladys did get her high school diploma. It's just that she never had the experience of high school. And so she felt so inadequate when it came to helping her own children uh, handle the ins and outs of high school life. But she did give 
her children a great example of someone who is a lifelong learner, especially in the field of health. She always had her shelves nearby stocked with books on health so that if anyone in her family or if her friends had a health need, she could look it up in one of her books. And Gladys was pretty much the dear Abby of the phone with her wit and her common sense and her knowledge and wisdom. She was in high demand in that department. And she did everybody's taxes. One thing Gladys loved about school was the singing. Even uh, as a mom, she used to sing songs from school while she worked. And that's how I learned them. And she had simple songs like animal songs from first grade up to more complicated melodies um, for the upper grades. My favorite one was um, this simple animal song that went, why? Are your cheeks so fat? Please, squirrel, tell me that. Now don't hurry up the tree till you have answered me. He twinkled beady eyes, and to my great surprise, out came tumbling to the ground. Five nuts, all smooth and Brown. The grasshopper hopped to the redwood tree, and he said, Come away, come away with me. Come away, come away. Oh, I have to work, and I cannot play, but I'll come away on another day. Hop away. Hop away. And then there were these two um, more complicated songs. There's music in the air when the infant morn draws nigh and faint its blushes seen on the bright and laughing sky. Many a heart ecstatic sounds with the thrill of a joy profound, while we list and chanted there to the music in the air. And then she had another favorite one of mine. Sing high, sing ho, for autumn time, the air is crisp and keen. Jack Frost is hiding in the dell where meadowlands are clean. The winds are playing in the trees. Great geese are on the wing. And everywhere with autumn joy, the wild would sweetly ring. Sing high, sing ho, I hope for autumn time. Then there was one that she taught me late in life over the phone. I was preparing to uh, teach a lesson in a Waldorf third grade class. And I wanted to tell stories about farm life, about my mom's life on the farm. So I loved how this song tied into her life, her experience on the farm, and was so realistic, even to the sound of the baby pig squealing at the end. And this is the song she taught me. Six little pigs in the straw with their mother, bright eyes, <clears throat> curly tails tumbling on each other. Bring them some apples from the orchard trees and hear those piggies say, please, please, please. 
Now, <clears throat> speaking of pigs, hog butchering time on the farm, um, which was done right before Thanksgiving so that they could be assured of a good, solid frost from then on to keep the meat cold, was a tough time for Gladys. She hated the sounds, all the squealing, the smells of blood, and the sights of guts and brains, everything. And <clears throat> the warm blood had to be stirred by hand with uh, the arm swirling around in the blood until it cooled. And each child got this job at a certain age, but Gladys couldn't do it. She would just throw up. So her sister Verona had to do it two years in a row to take Gladys's turn. And Verona would say later in life, well, that was just Gladys. Someone had to toughen up. Um, but there did come a time when Verona relied on Gladys. One day, Pa was out and Verona happened to find uh, a young heifer having her first calf in the barn and she was having a tough time. So Verona went to find Gladys and they came in and they found the heifer moaning and, um, you know, struggling, pushing, but nothing was happening. It, it just wasn't working. And so they looked and they saw that the calf's nose was poking out. And uh, calves are born with their front feet, their front hooves first, kind of like this. So Gladys, even though she was younger, did what Pa would have done. And she had seen him do this many times. So she pushed the nose of the little calf back inside its mother and she reached it inside and found its front hooves and worked them out so that they were coming out first. And then the two sisters pulled on those front legs as the heifer pushed and they were able to pull the calf out. And so they saved um, a possible great loss for the farm. And Pa would be so proud of them and so pleased. Now, Gladys and her sisters spent most of their time uh, together out in the field, planting, weeding, hoeing, harvesting the vegetables for uh, Pa to take to the farmer's market. And this began when she was four years old and continued day in and day out until she was 17 and got married. Now, school was an interruption, but as soon as they came home, they were sent out to the fields. And their only break was Sundays and thunderstorms. Oh, how they loved it when they saw the storm clouds moving in. They just prayed for rain. And if the storm passed over, they were so disappointed because it, they really would get it if they came home too soon. But on those rainy days, they were just so happy. They got to come in from the fields and they could work in the wash house you know, washing the vegetables. And it was so cool in that wash tub water. Or they might work in the shed, straightening things and sweeping. And if they were really lucky, 
they got to play in the barn. And that was their favorite. The barn was big and cool and smelled of hay. And they used to do things like uh, jump from the loft to the pile of hay in the middle between the two sides where the lofts were. Even though Gladys was terrified of doing this, this was one of their favorite things. There was also um, a pigeon coop up above one of the lofts on the outside and they would climb up there and peep through the peephole and look at the pigeons. Another favorite thing for Gladys was to um, reach her hand in the straw and pull out baby kittens and cuddle them. And she would give them unusual names like, um, uh, are you mine or just came? Now, one of their favorite games in the barn was to play wedding. So they would drag out the, the old rag bin where they kept the old clothes that they didn't use and were saving for the rag man when he came. And these were usually uh, the clothes that were in the boxes that, that were donated to their family that they didn't use. So they would pull out scraps and piece them together to make wedding outfits and then they would have these ceremonies. Now Loretta, their youngest sister, wasn't usually a part of this because Loretta did not have to work out in the fields. She was given to Ma as a helper in the house and kind of like Joseph with his multicolored coat, she would often if she did come out to play with them, she would run back to Ma and tattle on them. So she wasn't really welcome in her younger years. Um, for the rest of them, a typical day began at 6 a.m. when they had to get up and milk the cows. Then 8 a.m. was breakfast. Then it was out to the fields where they had to work until noon, which was their main meal. And um, there was a commuter train that went by their, their property at about 1130. They called it the peanut wagon. And then they would have to guess from there. But if they came too soon, they would get in trouble. Or sometimes Ma would call them. And then they would have their lunch, their main meal, and then go back out until six and then have supper. After supper, they there were the cows to milk again. And on uh, days, the nights before uh, Pa would go to market, they would have to uh, work sometimes into the dark with lanterns, loading the wagon or the truck with vegetables that he was going to sell the next day. But on the other evenings, um, they would uh, sometimes go across the street to visit Alma Brown. She had this pump organ and she would play songs like Red River Valley and they would all sit there and sing with her. And sometimes Pa and Ma would sing too uh, German songs for them. But for Gladys and her sisters, most of their days were spent out in the hot sun with the mosquitoes because they had that marsh so close by. One summer, Gladys and her sisters had to wear long winter coats in the heat with towels wrapped around their neck to keep these mosquitoes at bay. They were so bad that year. They would, picking beans, they would just touch the bush and the mosquitoes would just swarm out at them. Weeding was really the worst. So hard on their back and their knees. Hoeing was a little better because they got to stand up and they could get a little breeze and it went faster. Um, <clears throat> so misery and tiredness would make tempers flare. Verona was allergic to the heat. Her face would get beet red and she'd stand up and say, I'm hot. And then Miriam would shout, get back to work. 
and the fight would be on and dirt clods would fly. And Miriam would also get upset with Verona if she didn't get all the weeds pulled out because then they would grow back faster. More fights. But the hardest thing was when they could hear kids laughter coming from the pond on the other side of the railroad tracks, enjoying the cool water. Now, Gladys and her sisters didn't have any swimsuits, but it would have just been nice to wade in the water at least. So I'll end with a story that really shows the relationship between Gladys and her sisters. One day, for some unknown reason, it just kind of popped out of her. Gladys came home from school and she said to her sisters, guess what? I found a dollar today at school. And they got so excited. They're like, really? Where is it? Well, now she was in trouble. And, you know, as the proverb says, one lie leads to the other. She just kind of said the next thing that came to her mind. Um, I gave it to the teacher. And then they were all up in arms. What? She has no right to take it. That was yours. You found it. So then she had to do some quick thinking and just getting in deeper and deeper. She said, uh, for the flower club dues for the annual dues for the flower club. And then they were like, that's no reason for her to take that money. That's not fair. You have to go back and get that from her. And so now Gladys was really in trouble. And they kept insisting until finally she just, you know, broke down in tears and confessed to them that she had lied. They didn't believe her. They said, oh, you're just afraid to go back and face her. But you got to be brave. We'll help you. We'll come with you. She can't get away with this. You need to go back and face her. And they weren't going to let her off the hook. And poor Gladys was just in tears, sobbing. And, you know, she was really in trouble until finally they decide to just let it lie. But Gladys learned an important lesson from that experience that your sisters are there for you, even if it's all made up. So those are my stories about Gladys and her sisters on the farm on Calhoun Road. I hope you enjoyed them. Thank you for listening.